this video, I'll explain the different types of campaigns available in Ordo and show an example of how to set one up so you can deliver timely, personalized messages to your audience. There are four types of campaigns available in Ordo. Email and SMS campaigns are standalone messages that will be sent to a bulk audience or group of subscribers. A playbook, on the other hand, will be a series of email messages, typically with a common theme or shared objective, and they'll be sent to a subscriber in succession. Finally, we have journeys, which are our most popular and sophisticated campaign type. They're made up of multi-channel messages, including email, SMS, or even messages sent via your advertising platforms. And they can also contain actions that will keep teams and databases up to date. If you're ever in doubt when to use a playbook versus a journey, just remember that playbooks are always emails and they're sent in a linear fashion. Meanwhile, journeys can contain a variety of message types and they can be sent conditionally. We have templates available for all campaign types to help you get started. You can find them within the Ordo platform as you go to create a campaign or browse them all at ordo.com forward slash templates. But let's go ahead and create our first journey. Within Ordo, navigate to the campaigns tab. Here you'll find all of your campaigns and you can organize them in folders. Click new campaign to start creating and select your campaign type. We're going to create a journey here. You can start with a template and then customize it or start from scratch. Name your journey and then add it to a folder if you'd like. The first thing you'll do is determine how people become eligible to receive the messages or trigger the actions in your journey. This might be based on static attributes, event-based, or a combination. And it's easy to select a predefined audience or list of tagged people. But in this example, I'm going to use a filter. I'm going to filter to people who signed up for my free trial. So anytime this activity happens, the person who signed up will enter my journey. Next up, you'll determine how people exit the journey so they stop receiving messages or triggering actions in it. Beyond just making their way through the steps in my journey, I want this audience to exit if they either don't progress through the steps for some reason by the end of their 14-day trial expiring, or if they purchase a plan in the midst of the trial. You'll also set preferences for if people can enter the journey more than once, or even move through the journey multiple times concurrently. I'm happy to have this group of people come through again in the future if, for example, they submit another free trial request down the road. You'll make some decisions around subscription state to a particular audience. It isn't very relevant in this journey. And finally, determine what event to attribute success to. I'm trying to drive trial users to a paid plan, so I'll set a subscription change. And with that, I have all of my journey settings ready to go. So I'm gonna hop in and start editing my journey. Journeys are made up of what we call shapes, and you can add a new shape by clicking on the plus buttons anywhere on the journey. You can add an email or SMS, trigger an action, or add a shape to set up conditional rules. I'll use a few of these so you can get familiar with them. I mentioned earlier that journeys allow you to send messages via your advertising platforms, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll select an action shape, and here's where you'll find all of your connected data sources. I'm going to add the people in this journey to Google Ads, and I'll select the specific audience within AdWords as well. Next up, I'm going to add an email to my journey. You can select an existing email or create a new one directly from your journey. I'm going to work with existing emails for the purposes of this video. You'll notice here that my shape is currently switched off. You'll want to turn shapes on as you're happy with the way they're set up. Our journey isn't yet turned on, so no one will receive these messages yet. And I'll cover how we do that towards the end of the video. So before any subsequent messages or actions are triggered, I want to add a delay. And I can add a wait step by minutes, hours, or days, 
or I can actually select a specific date and time. I'll go for a one day wait. Conditions allow us to easily add more advanced logic, splitting our journeys off down different paths based on the data we have available in our CDP, a previous action taken, or a time bound consideration. For example, I'm going to create a condition that will split my journey down two paths based on how much product engagement the user has had in their trial. So I'll filter to anyone who has more than two rockets. I'll save my filter, and now I'm left with two pathways for my journey. And so now what I'm going to do is for those people who are showing strong product engagement, I'm going to actually tag those users. As a reminder, a tag will add these people to a static list. So I'll add them to my highly engaged try list tag and save that. I'll also use this condition to send two slightly different versions of an invitation to a weekly onboarding webinar. They contain copy variants that more directly speak to the level of engagement the user has had thus far. As I'm speeding through this, you'll see I also added some time delays. But now I have some more actions and messages to trigger that will be relevant to both paths. So rather than duplicating the work, I can simply relink my paths by clicking the little link icon and finding any of the other blue links to connect it to. Adding a split shape allows you to send a defined percentage of people down two different paths. This can be useful for A-B testing various messages or even a full experience within a journey. So for example, adding a split shape so that I can test whether an email or an SMS message is best for nudging my audience towards my desired action. Now, I'll go ahead and join this back up and show you a few last things before we go through how to actually publish and turn on your journey. An action shape can also be used to update fields in your Ordo CDP, your connected data sources, or to trigger actions like sending a notification email to your team so they'll know exactly what to do and when. For example, like when your sales team should get in touch with a new prospect. And finally, you can also use the action shapes to remove people from audiences in your advertising platform. If you want to make a change or fine tune the order of things as you go, simply click the menu icon on the shape you want and select move. Then click the plus icon within your journey for where you want it to go. Now our last step is to actually get this journey live. To do so, you'll first click Publish in the top right corner of the Journey Editor screen. Anytime you come back in to make a change, you'll need to publish those changes again as well. Then you'll exit out of the Editor window to the Overview where you'll go ahead and switch on your journey. Switching the journey on from this screen means it will start to actually accept people into the journey where they'll receive every message as long as that shape is actually switched on as well. I can get a really simple view of all the messages and their status from the Messages tab here. And as my journey runs and people move through it, I'll see data flow into these tabs, including the list of recipients who actually go through the journey, data around the journey's overall performance, and then finer details around how recipients engaged with it. And with that, you've now learned how to build a journey in Ordo. This is the most sophisticated of the four campaign types available. So if you have any questions about how to set one up or how to set up any of the other campaigns, visit our help center or contact us at help at ordo.com.